I want to bring in former FBI Deputy Assistant Director Danny Coulson. Uh, Danny, you know, uh, so often we do find that these, the, these, these terrorists have been within the, the radar or the grasp even of law enforcement, and for one reason or another, maybe have gotten out. Uh, do, have you had enough time to discern whether or not that could be the case here? Well, how, actually, I have. Um, I want you to think about this. We did not know who Tim McVeigh was. I did that case. I commanded that case. And you don't always know. Matter of fact, you hardly ever know. And we have a great intelligence collection capability, but there are a lot of people out there who don't like the United States. There are a lot of anti-Semites out there. And it's going to happen. I, I wish it was a perfect world where I could say, yeah, we're going to get all these guys. We're not. And that's why we get to get ready for the next one. This is a very serious situation, and it's going to get worse. And we can't rely on intelligence to protect us. We have to protect ourselves. All right. You know, to that point, uh, it, why do you think then it was initially downplayed by the FBI? You know, there's a lot of criticism of our military, our quote unquote woke military. Is something similar going on at the FBI? Well, I hope not. And, you know, let, let me just mention this to you. I've commanded a lot of these, and the information flow, the amount of information generated by these things is beyond comprehension. And what you know an hour after it starts is a thousand times than you know um, when it starts. Mm -hmm. So it, the information starts coming in. What, what's, what I say to you now, an hour may not be true. May not be true. We knew a guy went into, the, into that synagogue and took hostages. That he, we don't know if he's a anti-Semite. We don't know what he is, and that's why you have to wait for this stuff to play out. And I want to mention one thing to you here. <clears throat> we had a victory here. God blessed us with a great victory. All the hostages are alive. Uh, the bad guy is no longer with us. And it's almost like going to a Super Bowl conference and saying, you won the Super Bowl, but you had pass interference in the right. third quarter. And I know that's, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be demeaning anybody, but from somebody who's done a lot of these, it's hard. Well, and we, we had a blessing and to get this one done the way we did. Yeah, and before I let you go, and, you know, listen, we're, what we're trying to say is, and you brought it up, uh, this is the world we live in. So, you know, the quicker we can identify these and, and, and be honest about it. Uh, listen, the FBI has to be commended for the, the program uh, because we saw where the rabbi was actually able to use, uh, you know, these active shooter training to, for them to yes. escape. But we do, where do we go from here? Two teens have been arrested in Manchester. Uh, this this uh, Malik uh, Akram, he stayed in a homeless shelter January 6th, 11th, and 13th. He had a gun. It seems, where did he stay when he wasn't at the homeless shelter? How did he hit the gun? Aren't there so many more questions? Should we be on high alert until these are answered? No, we should be on high alert from now on. Uh, that's a really good question, but it's, it goes beyond your question. Uh, we, we're not going to catch all these guys, right. and we need to be ready. Each one of these institutions, including yours, needs to prepare for this. Danny, thank you so much. Always appreciate you. You're a great you, straight shooter, and we appreciate you always. Thank you.